Well, our Vixen is getting ready to ride the Silver Rocket, and I'm going to give you some straight scoop on this again. You know, I know people out there sometimes are over-exuberant on Silver. I don't know if they're doing it on, I don't know what the hell it is, if, what their purposes are, if they have a purpose or whatever. I've been critical of that, but I'm going to give you some really good uh, scoop about Silver because, being very honest, now this year, 2012, I figured it would hit at least over 50 because I was pretty damn sure a war would happen in the Middle East. That I that's a pretty much a postulate. When it, like I said, this is a gazillion times before when there's tensions in the Middle East and they're really bad tensions, gold, silver, and oil usually fly. Hey, you look back in history. Is that is that a theory or is that a fact? That's a fact, ain't it? Really. Now. I'm going to tell you this, though. Even if there's no problem in the Middle East, which I'm beginning to think unlikely is all hell, because, you know, some stuff I pointed out about what's going on in Gaza and Hamas and which Israel's strategy is long term, I, I don't think there is going to be less tensions in the Middle East. But I'm going to point out some silver, uh, simple things, even with the charts. Very simple. But, you know, when you're applying the simplicity, basics, things that, and like laws, postulates, pretty much how things go in the markets, hey, you know, you pretty much can't lose. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to play silver pumper, but I'm going to warn you, though, I'm going to say this right from the get-go. I think silver's going to hit about 70 roughly before it has a next, you know, hits a ceiling there temporarily before it has another charge at 100 or something or more. That I'm going to tell you right from the beginning here. And I'm going to explain exactly why this is, though, what's going to happen. So, uh... Old girl Silver sitting on the rocket, and she's ready to take off, man. She's got her silver bracelets on. You know, we're ready. I'm talking like, you know, if I thought Silver was going to go down in 2013 because of the fiscal cliff and all this crap, I'd go to Fiat Cash. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm sticking in with my position, and I'm going to show you something why I think you should be patient on this. First off, you know, this is a real simple chart, you know, public on net Danny and all that type of stuff. Not really drawing any lines on it. But this last time it went down at about 26 something. That was like the third time it hit around 26. There was, um, that was it. That was it. QE was announced. We had the anticipation of QE over here. Then it was announced in September. Goes up. And, you know, this point right up here around 35 is. A major resistance point you know it's been up here a couple times back in late 2011 and also like the end of February well it went a little bit above it for a day but roughly 35 at the end of thir uh, at the end of February in uh, 2012 it is you know the price point where it's been bounced off a couple times so here we had the classic retracement that's this actually this a little bit above 30 is a fib point from, from this 26 something to this about a 35. This is a fit point right here. It's classic all the way. I don't want to put too, too much faith in these charts, but when you start pulling them out a little bit more and you start using some real basic ironclad rules that work quite a bit and you look at other things, they damn well work. Okay? What's going to happen here is we're having another charge for 35. I'm going to say it's going to bust right through it. Because too many things, first off, common sense, QE is in place. QE is in place already. It's in place. It's going on forever. And they're going to start, like I said, the other thing is with the, the fiscal cliff, eh, it's going to be like a semi-fiscal cliff. You know, maybe they're going to raise taxes. They're not going to really start um, cutting spending that much, just a little bit, a few areas. It's going to be mostly business as usual. But let me point at something else. I mean, this is a fundamental chart. But here is silver, right? Every year, this is the industrial demand. Now, where I could see a pullback, it's like you say in 2009, there was actually a decrease in industrial demand. But what's going on today is there's an increase. Whether it's inflated dollars or not, there's an increase in industrial demand. It's going up, and it's forecast to go up to 20, in 2013, 2014, and 2015. Just like palladium and platinum, they're forecast to go way up. Industrial demand worldwide. The metals are going up. Now, I think what's going to happen is what to really watch for when to sell silver is this ratio. 
Don't look so much. The po price points is one thing, but watch this ratio. The next time silver runs into some serious resistance, I think it's going to be, it might get a little bit below 30 to 1 with gold. Because this last time, um, this last time it went to like, uh, well, it went to about almost like 31 to 1 to gold. This next time it might break through that and maybe it'll go to 28 to 1 to gold, something like that. But I would be cautiously selling some of it, not all of it, not most of your stash. I'm saying some of it. So you, because you're going to need fiat dollars. There's no doubt about that. I mean, fiat dollars is going to be around as a currency of exchange for a few years. It's not going to fall apart that fast. And basically, this is my warning to people that um, when it's silver does break through 50, and that's not something that's that crazy that can happen. Silver will break through 50. It hasn't broken through its all-time nominal high yet, and it will. It will. Uh, pretty much everything else has. Silver hasn't. It's lagging behind. But when it does, that's where you're going to get too many predictions out there where it's going to go to 100, 150, 200, and all that type of stuff. And I don't think it's going to do that right away. But consider I'm not going to bet the whole wad. I'm going to sell a little bit around, you know, 60, 70, 75, that type of stuff. And pieces, a very small amount of it. And just take the fiat cash and wait. There might be a pullback. That's what I'm assuming. But in 2013, um, there's a lot of things out there that are extremely bullish for gold. And this fiscal cliff, I mean, is real, is, I'll change the word fiscal cliff to fiscal irresponsibility. <laughs> They're not going to do the cliff. They're going to just keep raising the debt ceiling. And you know what that means. Gold's going to go up. But, you know, I could see maybe silver going down a little bit if there was really bad worldwide industrial demand but you know investment demand is picking up and but not only investment demand industrial demand has been steadily rising since 2009 so what we had is like the classic wave analysis or if you want to look at the Fibonacci analysis silver has been performing it looks a little cleaner on gold though but it's been performing exactly as expected. This is a classic pullback. And, you know, when QE was announced, it was right around 35. 35 was a point where it's been at. It had a lot of resistance before back in late 2011 and early 2012. It bounced off that point, did a retracement to a little bit above 30. I was, you know, I was guessing this, but I, it turned out to be right. I'm going to say it's going to go right through 35, and uh, it's off to the races from there. Where I'm putting out your word of caution, like, you know, today looks like a nice day, and like, you know, yesterday and the day before, it looked like the sky was falling. But it's going to start over the next months. It's going to look really good, silver. But my word of caution is going to come about when people are talking about uh, it going to 100, 200, 150, that type of stuff. Because once it breaks through 50, this is where I get the criticism of these silver people out there, the bloggers and all that stuff, man, they really get out there, you know, when it's going up, they're so super confident it's going to go to the moon then, <laughs> and that's really when you ought to be getting more worried about it, well, that's, this is my, this is my take on this, this is actually going to be my strategy on this, and uh, you can follow along, I mean, I'm not uh, trying to sell anything here exactly, and uh, actually, if I get into some more interesting productions on YouTube, they're probably going to be on health, sexual health, healing, and that type of stuff. Maybe some uh, how-to mechanical videos. Um, these silver videos generally aren't really good producers for me for money. Okay, I'll be quite honest with that. But I like doing them because it's really more my background. It's more in finance. But I apply a hell of a lot of common sense, I'll call that. I mean, I don't want people to be too impressed with somebody that does a lot of charts and a lot of spreadsheets and a lot of things like that because I always realize that's a sales pitch too. But where you can actually be safest is just look at the actual ironclad proven things. I mean, charts aren't always ironclad proven, but there are laws of nature that are going on in the markets. And, you know, that 35 was a big point of resistance before a couple times. So we had QE, we had, you know, the last time we hit the 26-something level, that was the third time. And now we got to QE, it's going on a way up. Silver industrial demand is up every year, and it's forecast to go up for 2013, 
be a new record in 2014 and another new record in 2015. Same with platinum and palladium. That means the silver to gold ratio should decrease. Gold should also go up because the fiscal cliff is not going to be a cliff. It's going to be fiscal irresponsibility and raising the debt ceiling. So I'd expect gold to go over 2000 in 2013. And where silver is probably going to take off like a rocket to hell. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how to say it. And, you know, you think I'm bullshit about this because I, w I was off for 2012. I know that. But, you know, I was also postulating that the war with Iran was going to start in the late spring of 2012. If that occurred, which was an extreme, it was actually extremely close that it would almost occur. If that occurred, uh, silver would be sitting a lot higher right now. But even leaving that scenario out of the cards with what's going on with the fiscal cliff, what's going to happen with the U.S. debt rating or some warnings to the debt and that type of stuff, maybe from Moody's. And what investors are going to do in general, because they're getting scared of keeping their money in U.S. dollars, if they, you know, if they're watching that, the only way to the U.S. government is going to hold together is to keep rates in the debt ceiling continually. So you know, gold's going to go up. That's going to be one asset they're going to kind of go to. Not the only asset, but it's going to be one. But silver, watch, watch. The industrial demand is still there. The fundamentals are still there, and the mines aren't making enough money because the price of silver is too low. So I want to make, I just want to, you know, I'm saying this over and over again, but I want you to make sure I'm not coming at it from like a silver pump or I'm coming at it from reality. Reality. And I think this is reality. It's like when you're sitting patiently waiting for this crap to happen and we had this last pullback back in the summer and then it went up and then we had this little correction. It's like while it's happening, it's maybe unnerving to some people. That I understand. But, you know, I'm trying to look at it extremely objectively. I I think it's going to go way to hell up. It is. It is. It could have went up a lot even already if the war in Iran started. But excluding that event, right now with the fiscal cliff and what's going on and the way they are handling it, it's going to be very bullish for gold. And considering that the industrial demand for silver is still way up along with platinum and palladium, investors are going to start moving into those metals too. All the bullish signs are there. And actually, per the charts, and actually where it pulls back on the actual price points and the Fibonacci and wave analysis, it all adds up all the way through. Silver in 2013 is going to hit a record high. I wish it would have hit a record high in 2012. Yes, but it's it's going to happen pretty soon. It is.